Hi everyone. Now, I've uh, been asked one or two questions about uh, synthetic flies, and basically, uh, it was about originally it was about a parachute fly. Can you tie a parachute fly with synthetic fibre? And uh, years ago, I did try it, um, and I did fish some flies, and it all came down to uh, I actually saw a gentleman demonstrate uh, some basic synthetic flies. Uh, a gentleman called, uh, his name is John Betts, an American uh, gentleman. And he actually had a book called Synthetic Flies, which I, and I've never bought it like, but it's, uh, I knew it was out there. Um, I think it was way back to the 80s, around about that time. Um, so he was probably doing it in the 70s, 80s, something like that. Uh, and basically, uh, it's, when I saw him demonstrate it, it was a local fly dressers guild he came to. And uh, and I enjoyed what he was what he was doing and his ideas and he mainly tied with a material called Zelon, uh, which basically a friend of mine who's a cobbler said Zelon was on in shoelaces. That's what it was in because obviously it dried. You had to gink it up or use your muslin or whatever you used to float your fly, but it was a material, a synthetic fibre that dried quick. Uh, Hence, it was used in shoelaces and so on. Uh, but uh, basically, he actually had it fine tuned into a good into a, a material that you could use for tying flies. And uh, so, uh, I did buy some when he was there and tried it, and I did catch fish. And mainly, he coloured these. If I remember right, he coloured these flies using uh, color uh, pens, like um, I, mean, I can't remember if it was Sharpie pens, but it was Pantone pens. I think he used. Uh, and I did buy Pantone pens at the time to colour. Uh, so it basically influenced me in certain things to do certain or use things I would never normally use in tying uh, dry flies or because uh, I would use natural fibre. And they did work. I just didn't, because I didn't have a lot of materials, I didn't tie a lot of them. And so what I, nowadays, there's lots of synthetic fibre. So I quickly tied a couple of dries and uh, did the parachute which if I remember right, that's how I did it. This is one of the parachutes using the full and mill ultra dry yarn. I've got a lighter version, uh, just here, just to, to give an idea what it's like. That's the synthetic fibre there, that tied like, uh, like a parachute. So I'm going to quickly tie one just to show you. The hooked size, obviously, tie. I'm going to tie these and I'll give these a go uh, when we get a chance to go in the river. When, it eventually settles, because uh, we haven't had a good start to the season, we basically can't get fishing for the river going up and down, uh, and the weather's not been great, so, but anyway, hook choice, uh, this is a full and mill, this is uh, obviously a size 14, it's an ultimate dry, in this case black nickel, uh, thread I'm going to be using, just going to use a uni thread, 8 this one, in yellow, so I'm just going to wax the thread. So what we do is sit, start the eye and quickly run down, say halfway, and then come halfway back up to this point. And this gives you a measure for the wing. Now I'm using a brown dun ultra dry yarn from Full and Mill. So I've got a length of it off. Now you could use Parapost, Polypro, uh, there's a few other things you could use if you haven't got the ultra dry yarn. So all I do is basically fold an inch round the uh, and come under, underneath and then front of my thread with about an inch obviously by and then I just lift it up and hold them both together just like that and then you can somehow do something like a figure eight so I ground the back and then I do a post turn and then I turn in front so it's a kind of quick as you can go and what that does it basically locks in I mean it's solid it will not move so then I cut them both the same length and at a good length that I can manage or move it out of the way. Then what I do is I'm going to keep to the synthetic side. I'm going to use, uh, these are micro fibbits. These were from, uh, I think these are Orvis ones. I've had them for many years. Jeez, I must have bought them back in the 80s when, when they came out. So uh, you're looking round about three to four fibres anyway. I just... They're so fine, I just grab, I think there's I think there's four in there. But the, the microfibers last for ages. Uh, but anyway, 
you're looking for a tail length that comes over the back, round about the hook length is a, is a nice balance. So I'm just going to trim this. Catch it on the way down. Just keeping these fibres, microfibres, on the top. Swap your way down. Do you want to come slightly around the bend, come underneath with a turn, pull towards the eye, and then a lock and turn on top. Uh, I was right there, there is four there. You could obviously encourage them to separate even more by doing a figure eight through them, but I'll just leave them. Now for the body, I'm just going to use this ultra dry yarn from Full and Mill, this one. Uh, it's called the Light Olive. I'm just going to take some a light. Not much. Slide it up. You start off quite light. You want a nice, a, wee, a fine taper in the, the fly. You want some sort of shape. And you just work your way up. You know, all the way up to the wing. Just a wee tiny bit more here. So I'm right up at the wing here. And then I want to take my thread in front. So that's our body. Now we can trim. Just trim away the, the longer fibres. Just take them out of the way, just so we've got a pro a shape. There's going to be plenty of fibre up the top. Drop my wing here and just trim this. There we are. And then what I'm going to do is the same dubbing. I mean, basically, the I'm using obviously the, the light olive, so we take some of this dubbing. And then I can take some of the, even the winging material I used, or I could go lighter and use a sort of light done or something and blend it into some of the, uh, the yarn. And you need a kind of stiffer fibre, like a leggy fibre like this. So you get some sort of kind of hackle form anyway. So what I'm going to do is take about, if you imagine, the width. So you're looking for an inch a hackle fibre, just at least that. So I've got an inch. And then we just get our dubbing and we blend these. The dubbing acts obviously as colour, but it binds the fibres. So just roll them together, just mix them up. Now, this is what I did years ago and it worked. But as I say, I just didn't have lots of colours to work with and it just fell by the wayside. But with questions you get asked nowadays, it just brings back memories. And you say, all right, I remember doing that. And I did this with synthetic, sorry, natural fibre as well. Uh, instead of using the ultra dry, I used guard hairs. I used the fur. Um, some of them a wee bit stiffer. So once you're happy with the blend, just sit it in your desk. Now you want to obviously form the, the parachute hackle. Now before I do that, I'm actually going to put a tiny bit of dubbing. I just want to tidy this area here. Just in front of the wing, but my thread's right beside the wing, so it's right there, so it's just this wee bit. I just I tie these things up. Now, first thing I do is wax the thread, put plenty on it. Makes it really tacky. And then I spin the bobbin anti-clockwise. And that what this does, it obviously flattens the thread. Okay, and then I get my dubbing needle. And I rub it, I rub the thread, and you'll, I don't know if you can see it, but it actually flattens it, and you can see it on the needle there, it's quite fine. But once I do that, I just rub it, then I get the, the needle, and I've just noticed this needle is a bit bent, but we'll manage. Just why I split the thread, hopefully, I've got a decent split, it's fine. So there's the blend of the ultra dry yarn and some of the dubbing. And I'll just, what I do is I hold the ball of dubbing in my finger and thumb and I tease it out, I pull it, I pull it out and put it in. And that kind of slightly straightens the fibre. So I just slide it up. Now you're looking, you've got a guess here how uh, much material we've got, but you can always take some off can put it on, so put enough on that you feel it will form the like a parachute hackle. So we've got at least an inch of fibre there. 
So then what you want to do is spin your bobbin clockwise. I usually hold it sort of 90 degrees to the hook. Away, take the bobbin away from the, the vise so it doesn't bounce off it or underneath the hook. Just spin it. It tightens back up. You'll feel it tightening up with your under your finger here. And you're just basically you can form a dubbing loop if you want. So that's your dubbing loop there. And then you just like if you imagine a hackle. I just put few a few turns underneath here. And you see there's a lot. And you want to end up with your thread in front of the wing. I'm just gonna put a wee tiny bit of dub in there. Just to taper it off. There we are. Just ignore things just now. It doesn't look like a pile of dubbing or a pile of, it's just a mess looking, but anyway, what we do then, I'm just gonna put varnish on my thread and work finish. Trim. Now the advantage of keeping this long means you can hold it out of the way. So we've got a pile of dubbing round there. So you get your velcro, so hold your wing, and then just bring it down. Just either side. Just bring it out and brush all the dubbing all the way around. Just say we are. That's fine. And you can see if I put it sideways a large spread of fibre. So there is. Now to get the length you'd like, now when you're tying a dry fly, mainly the kind of average length of fibre length for a dry fly would probably be one and a quarter to one and a half the gape. So the easiest way to measure that is to again hold your ring, throw down the fibre that you formed the, your hackle with. And then trim it to suit, so you've got your gape length, your gape, which is to the point of the hook. You want a quarter or half, so you just say, I'll say half, which is there. So trim, so you've brought them down both sides, and then you just bring it up. And that should give you your synthetic fibre or hackle. The thing you can do as well, obviously, is you can either leave it or you can come under, underneath and just trim like that. Trim that out. Trim your wing. There's a couple of ways of doing that. One, you can basically come in from the back, but to get the length, I usually cut it in line with the back of the hook. So that would be the top of the wing. It would be in line with the back of the hook. So at a slight angle, you can come in with the scissors. Trim, so it gives you oh, try the, there we are. So those are a bit blunt. There we go. And that's that's basically how, well, one of the ways I did, I tried it anyway, and it worked. I say this is a new fiber, so I'm going to tie up two or three, see how it goes. Hopefully, we'll get a, a video or two of the actually catching. But you can always reduce it. You, you've got it there to to mess around with. It's an idea. It's something we did. 30 years ago, um, some of them experimenting at the time. And it all came down to uh, John Betts and his synthetic flies and it got us all thinking because even nowadays, even though it was well, more than, well, it was in the 80s, 70s, 80s that John was doing this, so it goes back a long way that uh, synthetic fibre was being used and a lot of uh, traditional tied flies where natural fibre was being used. Um, and we're still doing it now, but there is more opportunity now to do that because there is more materials in the market. So we, maybe I could go back and experiment. And one of my top dry flies uh, is the, the Dynamite Harry. And the majority of that is synthetic. So, And it floats like a, clor a cork. So this is just a, this is answering the question about a parachute fly. Can you tie a parachute fly using a synthetic fibre, well that's how I did it, um, so you can give it a go. Uh, as I say, it looks quite heavy, but once you, you've got to fish it first, see what it's like, 
and then you can always reduce the dressing can take some of the fiber off mess around with it make it finer and see how you get on so anyway there we are i hope you enjoyed that uh give it a go let me know how you get on i'll be certainly tying one or two and see how the, how the fish so again thanks for watching until next time